Yo, people. Hello. Okay. Am I? Okay, I haven't lost anything. Okay. Let's me let me make myself a little bit less loud. Um yeah, hi. Welcome people. Um what is ah, I need to do something really quickly. Wait, what? Where is my stream elements chat? I don't really understand where is my stream elements chat. Okay. I need to figure that out. Um where that one is. Um the other times I'm using another chat window. So hi. Um I'm actually quite in a good mood today for multiple reasons. Um the main reason being that my something you can't see right now. I can show you actually, I can show you if I uh take the webcam off. Bam. The reason is this one right here. This isolation foam. So, I have no idea, let me, I really need to listen to the recording of this, um, because there was a significant difference between my old room and this one, simply because, okay, the area of my room that I'm sitting in right now from which I'm streaming is kind of empty, and that is intentional, um, because I wanted to have basically like an like a free workspace where I could do whatever the fuck I want and um, where I could move, where I could dance, where I could do whatever the fuck I want to do with it. And so that's the reason why I don't have any bookshelves on this wall next to me and on the wall in front of me. Um, but what comes with this are like empty walls, um, empty walls echoing you know that you know how it goes so um the thing then echoey and i asked myself okay hey why don't i try out this pointy foam thing this like sound like that breaks the sound waves etc and it was really fucking cheap it was like 15 euro um also even if it doesn't do anything even if it doesn't do anything um i don't know i feel like a lot of time like because right next to me, I feel like it's still echoey a little bit. Um, so even if it doesn't do anything, even if it doesn't do anything, I still have this kind of like atmosphere, LARPy vibe of profession, of like streaming professionalism. Um, something I talked about yesterday already with this, okay, these kinds of like cliche images of what the room of a streamer looks like and um, like these very specific imaginaries of that. Um, and how I that like I behave towards this in like this half ironic way of like, 
Yeah, I, I, it's it's difficult to describe it for me for someone. Like I could simply say, okay, it's like half ironic, and that's the only thing I can say. Seriously, um, and so yeah, but it's like half ironic. It's like yeah, it's it's a complex relationship, um, and yeah, I'm happy because of that. The the Ring Fit Adventure came. I don't want to. I don't want to um, stand up right now, but I haven't tried it out yet because my roommate um, still hasn't. Like the his switch is still in his car, and he didn't take the switch with him yet. And if I get to try it out tomorrow, um, yeah. The thing is, I still don't have a capture card, which if you can donate right up there. Um, yeah, we'll first buy the capture card and then the streaming PC. Probably, may I? I, I need to see. Um, so if you want to see me play um, Ring Fit Adventure for the Switch, um, because I do want to incorporate this into into the stream, I really would like to. Um, um, simply also that's like it's it's funny. It's like I feel the th the really weird shit is I feel more like justified. Like in oh, is that cringe or not? If I share that on stream rather when I do that on my own. And even if that's like yo zero, hi. Um so even if that's um even the, if this oh I feel more justified, I feel less cringe when I um when I would share the ring fit adventure stuff on on the stream. Even if that's like more like in like okay, how do you configure your own character um even if that's kind of questionable um at least it makes me do something that i wasn't doing before um that i wasn't able to do before so therefore it's like fine and yeah um so yeah i still need to get my hands out on the capture card there um other thing is something that's nice um we actually managed because the thing is with with the recording of yesterday of the simulating socialism event um it seemed like that for a moment um we had lost the recording because um a friend like uh, uh, philip dabrich sent me who was recording this session sent me the link with the recordings and i was like yeah but there's only like 15 minutes of the recording there and he was like huh for me, there's like the full video, and I was like, "What the fuck?" How like, and we were kind of panicking in that moment, like, like that we because that was really fucking good, and especially like with a prominent guest, that's like a good, like a really good thing, um, um, because what I would like, to, I, I can I can talk about this um, later uh, in a few minutes, um, but turned out that it was just a misunderstanding of mine. Um, the 15 minutes part was only like a preview by Dropbox itself. So I could download the whole video or like I, I could watch the whole video and we will be able to upload the whole video. I just had to download it. I couldn't watch the whole over two hours in Dropbox itself. That was the only thing. And I'm happy that that worked. Um, we will upload that to I will upload that tomorrow. I will of course like promote on all of SSH of all ADH social media the link for that, etc. And also on my stream. Um so you will be able to watch the event. No no worries. Um then there is um yeah. The these two these things I mean in general in quite good mood. Oh also something also Although I don't yet know how this will turn out or like how this will develop. Um, a really fucking cute girl that's, that's very much my type messaged me on OkCupid. And she messaged me in a way that like, like I was, I was, I really became like what really came to my consciousness like what, what i really became aware of is this holy fucking shit this is the first time since uh, like so this is the first time since a long time 
where I didn't felt weird or pressured in like a first messaging scenario. Um, and I answered her and um, I hope she will reply. And I, the, the thing is also, I didn't felt like because I kind of, um, because I kind of like didn't felt pressured in her first message. Um, I also didn't felt pressured by replying. It was just like, yeah, okay. Um, not like, oh my God, if I do one, if I make one mistake, everything will be fucked. But rather just like, hey, yeah. If I do a mistake, then I do a mistake. And, and, and that's it. That's me and um, everything's fine. Everything's cool. And so I think my message, my reply is like pretty, pretty good. And I felt good. Like, even if, let's say it like this, even if nothing of this worked out, I am at least reminded that, hey, um, this kind of like first messaging, getting to know each other is possible because I was kind of like, <laughs> because I was kind of like in this mind, like, I mean, COVID fucked all our social skills up a little bit and mine specifically. And this, I was never the best one with like getting to know someone, um, with whom I didn't like already had this, like, yeah, okay. Like this shared something. Um, yo, mushroom, what do you mean? Oh man, what the fuck? What do you mean? <laughs> yes, my mood board is my mood board is actually growing. Um, and I think I need to, if I, when I have my new printer, when I have my new printer, um, which I will buy sometimes, um, I think I will need to reprint the two mad tweet there that says, um, does socialism work? Um, and that tweet actually, like I, I screenshotted it and, but it was even a meme. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. And I printed that out even in my, um, old, old room because it inspired me like a whole fucking much, like a whole fucking much. Um, Simply because like like you don't associate like of course this is like not like I think his first comment under the tweet is like nah but still still imagine like big creators like um big influencers posting like unironically about socialism because they are posting unironically about capitalism and Imagine when we hit that level, what that means. And of course, media coverage, media attention isn't everything. That's of course, um, but it is a necessary and important part in our project. And yeah, that's what I'm. It's like this, like, oh my God, socialism came into this like normie. Although yeah, Tumut is kind of normie, but also kind of fucked up. I like Tumut very much. Um, so oh thanks for the link let me check that out real quick bam and what channel is that i'm always interested in finding new channels um i think it's still going oh Hausman's bookshop. Okay. Yeah, looks looks like a live stream. Looks like a live. Thank you for the for the link. Um, I will save that live stream immediately. There is also something that's pretty cool. Um, sometimes Verso does that with specific books. Um. Oh, okay. Um, sometimes they do that with specific books. Verso has like something like a round table, which is basically like, okay, they have a, which is of course also like a promotion thing. Um, they have like somebody publishing something. For example, I, I remember they did this with the, with the pipeline book by Mullen with the, this one right here. 
I don't know if they did that even with the or with the with the one before with the Corona, Corona Climate Chronic Emergency book, but basically that they invite authors, uh, their own authors or other people, to give like a short article, a short take, a short comment on the book, and that's like kind of like a digital round table in text form, you might say, and um, like some different perspectives on the on the book that they are. Um, yeah um and i really do like that because sometimes some like oftentimes it gives you like quite a good overview of the book and so you can you can decide okay is it worth it reading that because reading something like takes a lot of time especially when you read seriously um because when you read something seriously then most of the time that you will spend with a book will not go into actually reading the book but in in okay thinking about the book and making your mind up about the book like okay finding relation finding connections to other stuff that you have read finding connections to other stuff you have already been thinking about maybe you end up questioning some of the more like that you, that you come that you like okay that's very yeah you come into the book that's always like that that doesn't take that much time like let's be serious um and um so um um <laughs> no i would say like um <laughs> so like the thing is it really like okay you don't you don't simply read a book or don't read a book it's like you can read a book in a thousand different ways and it's, it's okay you have to decide sometimes like right before reading the book or sometimes like even in the process of reading the book okay what kind of approach to reading this book do you want to take that's very much dependent upon what kind of book are you reading um and yeah first of all cheers i'm, I'm really in good mood today i don't know what's wrong with me my kind of like depressiveness has lifted a little bit, which is maybe it's because I've bought stuff. Maybe it's literally because of that. I don't know. Um, oh, also, oh my God, I need to show you. I need to show you something, some some cool shit, some really cool shit. Like something that I really like, when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm drooling right now. Mm. So where was it? Here we go. Bam. There we go. Um, that's um, the program for, for, for a conference. And don't, don't be intrigued by the word conference. Everything's fine. Um, um, it's a conference under the title Asset Communism, Spectres of the Counterculture. And um, um, I will read shortly the descriptions. To what extent do the forgotten utopias of the 1960s and 70s haunt the 21st century? And under what material and psychological conditions could they emerge? The conference is dedicated to the past and present of countercultures and subcultures. The contributors, the contributors will deal in theory, art and practice with the idea of asset communism as articulated in the unfinished book by theorist Mark Fisher, who died in 2017. Acid refers to the psychedelic culture of the late 1960s and early 1970s, including its mind-altering effects. Um, curated by Kaska, Pascal Ewart and Christia, Christian Wertschulte. Cr Christian Wertschulte is the guy who um, translated Fisher's books, or like some of Fisher's books, from um, English to German. Um, Hey, to be quite honest, to be quite honest, I, I think something like this would be hilarious. Um, and would be really fucking cool, I think. Like, the thing is... So lit. Um, so, um, that all may sound like pretty academic, and I don't even expect that most of this um, 
And you can also, on the right, where you have like, there is like asset communism download detailed program, which is more like, okay, it gives you a short description of every single event that will happen. And yeah. Um, so what I was like, the thing is something, there has been a lot of stuff going on with Fisher's, with like Fisher's concept of asset communism, basically since his, basically since um, the K-Punk collection has been released. Um, where the unfinished introduction to the unfinished book Acid Communism was included. Um, and a lot of people had different takes on it. A lot of people had like different, did take that concept into different directions. There was this uh, weird concept created around the, la give me one second, around the last UK election. Um, of acid Corbynism, which sounded like very cringe, but also kind of weird and um, a little bit like a euphemism. Um, but when I, I, I did listen to like a podcast, which explained basically the con like, even if the concept sounds very cringe, what was the like fundamental idea what was. Um, and um, the thing is, of course, also, that um wait hmm I mean, I think take take uh, two and take three are pretty pretty similar. Um, um, you can still make the case that okay, like the raw material, like I, I don't like maybe it's like okay, take three is a little bit more harsher formulated, but I think take two and three are basically like kind of kind of much the same. Maybe take three has more of this oh. Are uh, like um, nothing else but neoliberalism could come out of nineteen sixty eight. Mm. Um, that's what I wanted to say. With regards to um, with regards to um, this emphasis on counterculture and shit, Fisher never does this in a way of like oh. This is all about culture or something. Um, that like, oh no, we have to forget like the economic struggle or something like that. Um, Fisher never makes this never makes this point. He basically the way he um, um, the way he thinks about like at least like in the acid communism part. Um, the way he thinks about these things is always like, okay, how can you, um, how can you think about political organization, which of course includes class struggle, in a way that is, like, neither repeats the mistakes of the past with the Leninist parties, um, nor repeats the mistakes of, for example, 1968, where it was like this, or like what came after it, with this, oh. Um, everything you have is this purely bottom-up approach that is against... Really? Okay. Wait. Is it... Or is that, like, on your... Okay. I have no idea, like, what could... Like, what could be the... Okay, let me give... Um, let me... Um, uh, get myself a little sound check on myself really quick. Where is... Where are the headphones? <laughs> okay. 
I always feel like I always try to stay in the gr like recently I try to stay in the green um um okay weird okay not in the green in like the middle of yellow oh okay now I try to like I try to stay in the because I always feel like that once I hit um yellow it's like it's like very short before um like over flat flatlining red okay give me a second hello 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 okay now i'm in like the middle of yellow or like the beginning of yellow middle of yellow that kind of thing maybe if, if that's better Okay. Yeah, that will be fine, I think. Okay. Because when I... um Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, <laughs> because otherwise... Yeah, because like here is like I'm almost already... Like I'm regularly hitting red right now. This is... <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Okay, let me... Oh, fuck. I, I wanna... Because I feel like this would be too loud. I feel like. Um, let me give another little check. Okay. So this is how I would normally talk. Come on, YouTube. Okay, YouTube is, is fucking up right now. Hello, this is how I normally talk right now. And this is how I would talk if I talk a little bit louder. Okay, yeah, that's actually fine. Holy shit. <laughs> Like why the fuck do they make this shit green then? Like why the f like green is supposed to be like yeah this is good this is good be here why the fuck? <laughs> oh also I need to uh, read like really quickly uh, mushrooms mushrooms Discord messages. Yeah I <laughs> I don't understand it like I always thought I was too I I was too loud so I try to like be like less yeah um oh fuck yeah must no 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 thank you i only i almost forgot about um the the pictures that you've sent me um no that's cool to be because that's like a, like i mean the reason why I have that um, that print on there is basically to remind to remind myself that this, this is not a computer rendering. This is something that actually exists in the real world. And so you telling me, okay, hey, this is a casino built in Macau. Um, I have to ask this really quickly: Is Macau a city or is that a country? Because I literally, like, I legitimately don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know Macau. I'm sorry. Like, I don't know, really. And I don't want to Google. I, w I want to at least like be honest with my um, a special city region. Okay. In China. Oh, so special city region like in... Um, Ah, oh, okay. I just wanted to ask, like, um, does it have like the same kind of historically um, historical background with like, okay, being like a formerly British colony or something like that? Maybe you know what? Maybe I can make it a little bit like less because I like. Oh God, I like it more when the mic is a little bit a former Portuguese colony. Okay, okay. 
Okay, yeah, this should be fine. This should be fine, I think. Um, because I like it when the mic is... is the, I know it's supposed to be more... more n closer to your mouth. Um, <laughs> a gambling city. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Something else that I needed to... Um, I wanted to show you. Um, there is... A new issue out of rethinking Marxism about um, a platform economy. Um, I will just quickly read the titles. Um, magic itself is no magic bullet, technology and social conflict by Zoe Sherman. Consumption capital and class in digital space. The Political Economy of Pay-Per-Click Business Models by Shahram Azhar, if I pronounce it correctly. Digital Feudalism, Sharecropping, Ground Rent and Tribute by Stan Harrison. This sounds, this sounds very interesting. Platform Capitalism, Platform Cooperativism and The Commons by Evangelos Papa Dimitropoulos. Okay. Um, the Dialectic of Knowledge, A Contribution to the Theory of Knowledge in Advanced Capitalism by Bartosz Mika. Deconstructing the Discourse of Self-Corrective Intellectual Property Market by Boran Ali Merchan and Altuch um, Yelchintas. Um, on Streaming Media Platforms, The Audiences and Public Life by Ar Arash Öschgün and Andreas Treske. <laughs> I will I will fucking send you the the link to that article like um end of a review there by Zoe Shawman um the color of creatorship intellectual property race and the making of americans by An Anjali Watts by Stanford University Press 2020 um yeah and bam oh no this is not um you can't load the website? What? what? Okay. Um, okay, one question. Can you load um, this website? This is the one about streaming platforms. Um, you know, like I need to do something like, um, like a Marxist take, Marxist analysis of streaming platforms. Okay, good. Um, because then if you can, um, you can click on like above, you can click on um, rethinking Marxism. And here you go, you know, like, bam. I will just send it to you. Um, yeah, because rethinking Marxism.org works for me. That's, I click, um, Okay, here. This is like the academic publishing site where you have like the, um, we have like the, okay. Um, the thing is, all of that is of course like kept behind, um, kept behind paywalls that are incredibly um, way too high. Um, but let me, let me introduce you to a wonderful, wonderful website. No, not that one, no. If you have ever worked in academia, um, be it as a student, be it as a researcher, you will know this website by heart. Bam. <laughs> so basically everything you gotta do to um, to avoid the paywalls is you copy. So if you're interested in reading anything of this, you, there is this um, there is this number that's called the DOI number of an article, um, which should be pretty um, pretty much on the top. It's it's very visible. The DOI like there is this um, now. Come on, like for example. Um, it can be formulated as a link. It can be a pure number that doesn't matter. Um, bam. This, for example, is a DOI number. Um, it's basically just like, think about it as an ID 
for academic articles. It's like a long, a long line of um, the limeys. <laughs> what are limeys? <laughs> and everything you gotta do is you go to Sci-Hub. Um, sometimes because Sci-Hub isn't like very isn't the most legally stable website um as you might be able to imagine they um basically it's one person it's one person um who's running this um this is which is fucking amazing um I will not read that shit. Are, do you think, do you expect from me to read an, a Wikipedia article on stream? Are you fucking crazy? Um, so, um, so they change their like um, domain from time to time. So the best thing is if you simply Google Psi minus hub and then you will find the most active, the most up-to-date um, domain. You click on it, you copy the DOI, you um, you uh, paste the DOI into the search bar of Sci-Hub, bam, maybe you, you have to make a test of like putting some numbers in there that you know from other websites, um, but sometimes not, bam, you do that, bam, you can download the article for free. That's how Sci-Hub works. It's basically like the, the idea of okay, being able to share knowledge as like a common good that you don't have to that you don't have to buy for because like no no person in the fucking world can afford can afford any of those paywall prices only university libraries can do that and sometimes university libraries are, so university libraries actually have to check okay how much money do we have um, what is our budget and so they can't subscribe to all of the publishers so they have to like take some and the other ones, the students don't get access to. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to share that with you. Um, another one. So I wanted to talk a, little, a tiny bit. We're going to get to the digital art thing. We're going to get to the digital art thing. Trust me. Mm. But first of all, an analog art thing. I have some Doritos. Oh my god, this 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 smell. Mushroom, thank you for the last the last pick, I, I will um, listen into the, uh, the music um, by James Furrow. Wait a second, wait a second. I don't know if maybe I have already talked to Kim about James Ferraro. I don't know if, if I... that he, like, or like Because Kim told me about some guy who's, who, of, of whom... Um, by whom he is like really, really inspired by the aesthetics of that person, um, like with, with regards to fashion. And I don't know if he talked about James Ferraro, but when I just looked, like the name could have been James Ferraro, and the styles look actually kind of similar. And so maybe I've actually stumbled across this person already. Um, but I already like the aesthetics of the last pic you sent me. So here's Doritos ASMR. Do Oh my god, it's Doritos and Monster ASMR. That that was necessary. Oh my god, that was a perfect combination. It was a perfect combination of everything. Um, yeah. Mm. You know, I do. I very very in in 
in under very sp only under very specific circumstances i actually do stuff that is clippable but this is one of those one of those instances <laughs> mm. So, um, what I wanted to talk about a little bit before we get into the art thing um, is some thoughts I had about um, yesterday's event and like, okay, hey, from an organization standpoint, um, like strategic organization standpoint, how we could, like, how, how can we use basically, um, how can we use those events like to, to um to get every everybody of you on track um yesterday a d h hosted um an event um which was called simulating socialism and we had invited um lay Phillips who is co author of the people's republic of walmart um which is an amazing book um and we had invited like or like who gave a talk and discussed was our member Philip Dabrich, who has done his PhD. I learned that his PhD is not in political economy, but in philosophy, but I think he had studied political economy. Like, he is certainly an economist, and um, for his PhD project, what he did was to create a computer simulation of a socialist plant economy. Like, he had to devise algorithms and shit like that, and how do you how do you do like how do you create productions plans which are optimal with regards to resource use and distribution how do you decide what which production plan that is consistent do you actually choose etc and um so basically dabrich has a, a model of a planned socialist economy that's technically feasible and that in the model works perfectly like there is like okay perfectly but that works in the model of course that's a computer simulation um and he's aware that like some additional research would have to be done but it's like it's like something like a big fucking step um um which like other research then can relate to can critique can say oh my god this is good but maybe we can um um, we can um, like have more of a, um, basically pursue a little bit of a different direction on this point and stuff like that. And I thought that um, like my give me a second. And like Lay Phillips is somebody who is like pretty well known. Like that was you might say that Lay Phillips is like probably. Maybe not completely, but certainly, maybe our most prominent guest we had so far ever. I, I really think so. I really think so. Um, and um, I think apart from the technical difficulties, which were kind of unprofessional and kind of fucked up, but with regards to the content like that we delivered, um, I think everybody who was there really, really, really gained like a lot of like like a good chunk of recognition and certainly from lay phillips himself and it's always good to have like good standing with someone who's quite influential or someone who has like quite a good network who a lot of people know and who a lot of people respect and um it's always good when those people have like a good um a good opinion of you <laughs> and he said, like, I already texted with him again, and he said, like, yeah, he had a lot of fun, and it was, like, really interesting, and he wants to know more about Dabrich's model, and I sent him uh, some additional stuff, I sent him Dabrich's PhD thesis, and so on, and that, because, like, basic, I talked about this yesterday with, like, basically this point about, okay, um, organ, like, democratic organizing and knowledge. And how do you basically balance those two things? Um, how do, not maybe balance in the sense of oh my god they are automatically some kind of like mutually exclusive options, but rather okay how how can you combine both of these things in like where in 
in the most cases that are possible, both like make each other profit from one another. So that it isn't like, oh my god, I have to choose between do I use knowledge or do I use democratic decision making and organizing? Um, but how can maybe both enter into a relationship that like the more knowledge you have, the more democracy you also have, like that kind of thing. And rather than, okay, either this or that. And that such a such an event like yesterday, um, maybe especially with the recognition that we gained can like if we really follow up on something like that um we could really come into like a dynamic where adh becomes like a well-known hub for the discussion of um models of uh, contemporary socialist plant economies and where like because like we had two people at least at least two people like one person i know and the other person i didn't know but who who asked questions that were um, very obviously related to like, okay, this person has done um, himself like some serious academic research on contemporary models of plant economies. And he actually like also explicitly said, hey, I recently co-published this book, blah, 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 that kind of shit. Um, and so it's fucking cool, especially like, okay, you can't, you can't build your movement and your organization purely out of academics and make it purely based upon academic knowledge. That's fucking stupid. Um, but it's also fucking stupid to say, oh my god, these are only academics. Um, we need working class people. First of all, to divide academics and working class people is kind of like... <sighs> makes sense under specific conditions. But with regards to economic precarity and that kind of shit, this doesn't make sense. Like, academics are among the most precarious people with regards to job situation that you can imagine like maybe maybe the gig worker is like even more precarious but like an academic has like usually um like when you pursue an academic career you usually have like okay always like one year contracts that like over the year you don't know if they are being if they're going to be renewed or not like you simply don't know and um of course, like, and then, like, you'd never really have any sense of financial stability. You can never really plan your life because you know, okay, now I know I will have this job in this university for the next five to ten years or something like that. And um, so basically, like, academia is, like, really this fucking meat grinder where young people get thrown into and... um. It's fucking disgusting. Um, and the thing is, okay, academia has specific resources. Our academia produces people with specific skills that we need. It's, it's as simple as that. Without those skills, without those resources, you won't be really able to have like a successful... Um, movement and or organization that's just not gonna happen um and of course then the question is okay how do you how do you organize those interactions and maybe it could really be that okay hey we invite more people to talk about and discuss like also critically also discuss um stuff around, for example, like Dabrich's model of economic planning, and that we could like get more and more recognition in this research community in this field and attract more and more people and really become like this centralizing hub with regards to this to this kind of knowledge. Um, the good thing is then that, okay, um, knowledge that is usually kept like kind of closed in those academic circles like you know there is like a statistic like the average academic article gets read by like three or five people or something like that and all of these people work in your field it's highly specialized um apart from your own little tiny research community focused on the very thing that you are currently researching um nobody will ever Apart from you become like fucking Zizek and like a fucking public intellectual or something like that. But those are incredibly rare. Um, it's very likely, it's incredibly likely that this will not happen. Um, and 
So apart from that, this kind of knowledge will never reach anybody else. Never, never, ever. And the thing is, you also can, um, of course, you can teach students, you can give them an overview over something. In those cases, in those cases, your knowledge like kind of gets transferred to something outside the academic discourse itself. But um, if you have like very specific constraints upon teaching, um, which are also really fucked, um, um, like structural constraints of, okay, you have to do this or that program, and you can't. Some a lot of times it's like you can't really share your research. That's really really fucking difficult. Um, and yeah, so it's very un like maybe like the 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 frontier of educa of academic education you might say is like the only frontier where cutting edge knowledge in this regard can reach like a wider audience and even that audience is very much um yeah it's it's fucking people who study like these are of course like massive amounts of people um but still um and so you would have with those becoming such a knowledge hub um like that when people think about, okay, contemporary socialist economic planning, that people immediately think about ADH. And okay, if you want to learn and if you want to discuss these things, you go to ADH. Um, and just be it and just be it as a media project, like not even, it doesn't even have to be that we become like this hub in the sense of, oh my God, we like all of these researchers need to become members or something like that. Like, I'm not even talking about that. I'm rather talking about becoming like this media hub. Um, where like, okay, we have discussions um, about this kind of stuff and that this, um... so um, basically we have different levels. We have different, because we do multiple things at once. But let me finish my, my thought first. And, um, um, so that this kind of research that is normally kept in the very close academic discourse gets, first of all, collected and centralized in, in ADH's media sphere. And then through this centralization and through this, okay, people know, oh, ADH is like the spot to go, um, ADH's YouTube channel, for example, if I want to learn about contemporary models of economic planning. And through this centralization, this kind of knowledge could spread in to such a such an incredibly larger degree, which is fucking like this is what we want. And also, you can also adapt like the way you communicate this kind of knowledge to the format. Like, in you can make it more overview style, more introductory. That like it's more. Um, that more people can like actually understand that rather than like okay being purely for the academic discourse and yeah and so that it somehow becomes relevant for the political organizing stuff mm. okay what adh actually does basically we have three areas where we're active in um we are at once like you might say like we title ourselves then a think tank which is simply like okay hey um what that means in praxis can be very can be quite different things um so that for example we have somebody like Dabrich who develops such a model um but we also have like we recently started a project which is kind of like okay um creating like policy proposals actually or evaluating policy proposals which are kind of prominent at the moment and which kind of like go into the direction okay how could we um through those policy reforms how could we go into like a step towards socialism of course these policies will not usher in socialism directly um but that they can basically be like preparatory steps into this direction like actual winning of power that is institutionalized then that makes the next steps much easier and is necessary for the next steps. You can't just, it's, or it's very difficult to just um, skip the intermediary step. And like, this is what um, 
the think tank, um, we like basically we also have like theoretical and strategic discussions internally. Um, which we, to a certain extent, then also communicate to the outside in, in terms of of articles. And there it also slides into the, okay, we're also like a media organization in, for example, like this think tank and media organization goes like into one another. Um, <laughs> I wish, I wish. And that... Um, for example, then this kind of these kind of reflections, thoughts, and discussions to a certain part are also then published, um, like on our YouTube channel that we stream that kind of stuff, um, and basically that we ourselves like create um, media products. We ourselves have um, lectures. We also like we once did a YouTube video, which is basically like okay explaining fundamentals of capitalist dynamics but that took like a whole ass long time because there was like so much so much animation involved and we didn't have much people back in the day um um instrumentality committee <laughs> there is no such thing as such a committee um we do social media work which could be considered like the media um um, that media outlet, like we have like our different social media uh, sites where we put like recent like um, posts, um, sometimes to more general stuff, sometimes to more co like stuff that's like on the day to day uh, takes. Um, and then we have like um, basically the, the department that's like, you might call it like the organizing. Ah, this one. Ah, okay, okay. Instrumentality committee. Holy shit! I really need to step up my my NGE law. I I feel. Um. So we have then like an uh, organizing. Um. <laughs> Um, the organizing department, you might say, which is okay. Mm. Um, which is basic, like for example, some of our people there um, participated in work, like in organizing workshops, where basically, okay, you have like training, because organizing is a skill. Um, you can think of union organizing, but also like, okay, organizing in a little bit larger context, a little bit wider context, that organizing is a skill that you can learn. It's not something you can do it or, or you either can't do it. And they participated in workshops for that. And now we are preparing right now, okay. And we also, with those skills, for example, um, um, supported campaigns which were already ongoing but which were not initiated by us um, for example one like basically we then and all of this stuff kind of like goes together that okay hey because we need some way to decide okay hey what kind of struggles do we support for example and um, we have this idea of the concentric attack which is basically okay you have to focus all of your energy and all of your resources on one strategic point where if you are successful at that point of the struggle, this will have a lot of knockoff effects that this one success will basically snowball into or is likely to snowball into further successes. That one success builds power in a lot of other ways and um, like strategic, like not points, basically. But in order to even have like such a conceptualization of concentric attack and the question of, okay, hey, what kind of struggles um, do kind of like actually fit this description and are like the strategically most important ones, you have to have the think tank, the think tank element in it. And so think tank and the organizing stuff, they inform each other because you also, of course, reflect upon the experiences and the failures and, success and um, uh, successes that you made in the organizing efforts. And um, 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 the thing is actually this organizing thing 
is so far the only one that's tied to any locality that's tied to Germany um, because that's where we have the most members and that's where we are focusing our practical struggles on right now. All of the other stuff, the think tank stuff, the, the media stuff, um, all of that is completely online. All of that, so basically we have like Sketches, Sketches lives in Peru. Sketches lives in Peru. Um, and um, all of the other work you can do online, like it doesn't matter where you live as long as you have like a somehow stable internet connection and a PC. And um, I mean, fuck, we need people who, for example, like program our own the, yeah, that depends very much upon, okay, what kind of pro what kind of internal project do you want to join? Like that's like so many different stuff. Um, for example, we have people who do computer stuff, who do program and keep up to date our own internal digital infrastructure, um, which is like we don't only work on Discord. We have like an own internal platform where we have stuff. Um, we have a website that needs to be um, kept alive and updated, etc. Um, you can do social media work. You can write stuff like articles. Um, um, you can design stuff that people then use as social media fonts. You can produce media. You can make network. You can also like what I have been doing um, a lot is not like networking with like actually existing um organization or struggle campaigns but i've been trying to do okay hey um or like networking with um you might say persons and institutions which are important for us and which are like politically and theoretically kind of aligned with us and who are more on like the academic side of things um but which is also important because, okay, those people with the skills that we need and which are very valuable and maybe already politically like very much aligned with us and also frustrated by what kind of options there are so far and that we want to absorb them, um, you reach those people by, by networking with institutions, um, with acad like academic, academic and academically aligned institutions. And... Um, um, for example, like I organized um, a discussion between Dennis Grämer and Rob Lucas from EndNotes with the New Center, where I study, where we talked about an, an article by Lucas, by, uh, by Rob Lucas, and um, the stuff with Platypus, for example, also would fit into this. And um, so what kind of like actual concrete work you do is very, very, very open. And the thing is, of course, also, fuck, we have one person that is only responsible for our finances. Like, <laughs> um, that's also possible. Then we, of course, also have, like, internal positions, which basically have, like, a coordinating function internal to, like, different commissariats. Where, like, okay, hey, they're, like, the, commiss they're, like, the commissionary of, like, this or that commissariat. And... They are kind of like the leading role in this commissariat that they have like this coordinating function of all the sub projects which happen in like one commissariat. And so that's like internal um, uh, clarity and overview of internal communication. Um, so there's a lot of division of labor going on there. And it's not, it's not like it's really more like a like the thing is, it's a it's a diff. It's a weird combination. It's like kind of like, OK. You have like your, um, your like explicitly social um, organization map to understand it. Um, the thing is, I'm kind of like in. I'm, I'm kind of like um, thinking right now. Um, so something what we do basic like what I kind of like talked about it right now when we have an um an event which is like directed like explicitly directed to people who are interested in adh or just want to get to know adh a little bit better we basically have like this presentation or like this okay hey we introduce the organization the structure of the organization um to new people but this is of course only also vocal like without graph maybe the graphics would actually be good um, 
um, we have this in text form, like, um, um, there is of course, like, there is formal organization about, okay, who has what right to vote about what decisions, um, under which conditions, and, um, that like, okay, you don't have to decide, like, that not everybody has to decide everything at all times, but that, okay, decisions internal to one commissariat and to one project can be decided by the people involved there, but, um, um, and not everything has to be decided by everybody. Um, there is a certain kind of specialization, but that's still the overall structure of the organization and the strategic um, orientation is still decided like by everybody equally. And that's an important thing. I don't remember right now the formal structure of how that is organized, but that if we have like documents where this is where this is um, like put, um, maybe if you're interested, um, we have on our Discord server, we have like a little section for people that can join the Discord server who are somehow interested, but um, who like aren't sure if they want to become member yet or who are just interested or something like that. And it's like the welcome launch, we call it. And um, I think I need to retry. Um, where you can ask questions, you can introduce yourself, you can get things clearer, etc. And if you want, I can um, send you like a short um, um, uh, Ah, that's, give me a second, maybe that's actually possible. Um, Um, again. I think... No, the thing is like this, the welcome launch isn't very... Uh, the guest launch, we call it, the guest launch. Um, the guest launch is only very... is only... Um, come on, link tie in here, bam. Um, I will post it again into the chat really quick. Um, the guest launch is only um, active like from time to time um, but it's never that like trust me so don't feel it's weird oh god trust me. so Damn. don't feel weird ah fuck no 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 this is the wrong one help <sighs> okay Mitglieder einladen Bam, here we go. I have now copied it. Okay. So the thing is with regards to like, okay, you need like a map or something like that. We did something like that um, half a year ago or so, where you where we used Stafford's be a viable system model and tried to map and tried to map our own organizational structure onto that viable system model. And we found some discrepancies that like, okay, our organization wasn't completely yet a viable system. Um, and like we do, s also something we actually did, um, we have some kind of like institutional um, status. Um, we have like, how do you call like, um, give me a second, I need to watch, I need to watch up like a short word. Um, Ah, okay. Weird. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I said, the entry hall is like somehow or like sometimes really a little bit... Um, it, I can tell you like, okay, hey, you can easily ask... Quite, like sometimes people are just shy and don't really follow up much. Uh, but you can easily just jump in there and ask like any question whatsoever. I think people are actually very happy about that. Um, yeah, like no problem whatsoever. Um, don't be too woo -woo shy. Um, so we have also um, created, um, we've also created, um, we have created a society. <laughs> like, 
just a club association. Yeah, cl like, which is basically like there is this very specific, very specific institution. There is like probably not really um, um, a literal translation for the in Germany. It's called Verein. Um, bit opaque. Um, I don't know. I th I think like at least maybe like this. Maybe like this. I think there is a strength in like suggesting like there is like this. Okay, hey, oh my god, we are like this, um, especially in the media stuff. Um, we are this like big ass, really cool organization, and to suggest something like this is really helpful sometimes with regards to. Um, but um, and maybe sometimes it can, it probably also depends upon your own personal taste. Um, because I was really turned on by that, that, oh my God, I want to know what these people are doing. I want to know. And then like when I learned, oh my God, I can contribute to this myself. And this was really fucking cool. Um, we have these regular like, okay, introduction events where okay we introduce the organization we talk about what we do, what we are doing um the thing the thing is simply i can't walk you through like and it's really like okay hey like i think just saying we're opaque opaque is a little bit unfair like there might be like a little bit um i don't tend to chase um Hmm. But the thing is, all like this is also interesting. You might say, okay, with this specific kind of aesthetic, um, I don't even think this aesthetic is like even this harsh because we always say, okay, hey, like in the end of events or like during events, we always say, hey, you can just message us on social media, on any of our social media platforms if you're interested, if you have questions. Um, you can also mail us, you can also have like the complete joint form, like the complete hand in the joint form already, um, however you want to do it. Like we are pretty, pretty open there for like any kind of, okay, however you want to approach us, approach us in this way and that's it. Like not really like, hey, okay, not really like a big thing. Um, but it's interesting how different kinds of people are turned on or off by different kinds of aesthetics. Um, yeah, I mean, um, the thing is also, you might also say, okay, hey, um, there must be some kind of like initiative from the person who wants to join um, because you can't, um, Hmm. I think something um, you could say it like this you could say it like, like accelerationism left accelerationism in terms of like practical decision making in actual organizing doesn't even like does in itself in itself without any kind of context without any kind of um hmm, um without any kind of okay context into which under which like doesn't tell you very much accelerationism does tell you okay like left accelerationism okay oh technology isn't inherently capitalist and isn't all inherently bad um, and we should use it in our organizing and for emancipation but that l completely leaves open the question of like oh okay what kinds of technology should we use um, um, how do we use them um, all, and all of that stuff all of that like in-depth thing it's more like you might say more like um like an abstract direction 
Um, but the thing is like the way this abstract direction then plays itself out under very specific circumstances when you actually start organizing and actually start doing work is very like these are two different levels and um like we wouldn't for example um uh we wouldn't for example let like people who are like anarcho primitivists or something like that into the organization um because they simply would derail everything and yeah um but um yeah like the very like the okay the in-depth practical questions you you find them out in like the concrete work pro like i can't the thing is like this these questions are like then so much so many um um that you have to discuss them really on a case by case basis um yeah i can i this is everything i can say to you mm. I mean, of course, you're very free to say like, okay, hey, I want to wait. I want to like lean back and kind of learn more over the time. Um, and um, I mean, that's completely fine. That's, I don't pressure you in any way whatsoever. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I know what I want to say, like something we have actually gone, like something we've actually achieved, which has taken us over a year, is we actually um, have, or like we don't have, but we have institutionalized like an association, which has a very specific legal status in Germany, which gains like state support. And where you get money from the states in order to fund shit and everything. And so what we can do is we can we get basically get money from the state in order to do shit. And um we can for example um we can for example support people financially when it comes to certain research projects. And um um I I'm not complete like another person has like gone through this entire process and knows okay what are the conditions of what we can support and what not because it's like um it's called um it's not like namely associated with the adh it's called um institute for democracy or modernity and um yeah so we have to like you have like specific legal frame you can't just write in there, oh my god, we do socialism now. Like, that's not possible. <laughs> um, there has to be, like, but like, of course, there can be also like personal switching between ADH and the IDM. And yeah, it's still like a pretty new project, but it's really cool that we actually managed to get like legal standing for that now. And yeah. Um, okay. Mm. Ah, GG means gotta go. Okay. Okay, yeah. Peace out. Goodbye. I want to eat some Doritos now. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I just lost another follower, I see.
Okay. So. I wanted to show you something. Or like, I'm not really showing, but like, um, this is digital art exhibition that I like clicked through myself like really quickly, but didn't go into in detail where I was and um, like I joined the opening event, which gave like a little bit of background, what they did, the history of that, etc. And I found it very interesting, like simply from like the aesthetics, um, and I wanted to explore that more with you together. Um, but I'm also really, really, I want to eat some Doritos right now. And maybe we can watch a YouTube video in, in the meantime, so I can eat something, drink something, and then we can go. <clears throat> um... Oh, some some stuff that I want to want to watch with you, um, so, like in the future, is by like some of the trust videos by the trust think tank, um, because they have some very like Journal Pope has some very interesting stuff there about the relation of left accelerationism and degrowth and trying to find some synthesis where both can learn from each other, and oh my god, that would be something that would be interesting to zero actually. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I do want, like, I do want to watch something that gives me, like, like 15 minutes or something like that to eat, or 10 minutes is even okay. Um, mm. This seems okay. I haven't watched this yet. Um, this is the new, like a little segment of the latest Jacobin stream with Baskar Sankara, which is simply called "What's the Point of Marxism?" <laughs> this this segment. Um, I'm interested. Let's see what comes out of this. What? Why the fuck? Okay. Why the fuck can't I choose the fucking? Am I not connected with my head with my headphones? I'm not. What the fuck? Why? Why? Okay, no. Hmm? I have to turn them on again. They like, turned themselves off. Come on. Mm hmm. I oh, know it's here. Okay. No, it's not. Mm. Okay. Now we're back. Now we're back. Yes. Fuck yeah. So, I just want to watch this myself, so, yeah, let's see. 
I, I sort of wish I had asked him a question about actually existing social democracy uh, in the Nordic states, which is kind of the gold standard today, right? Um, but perhaps that's actually a question for Matt Brunig, who has been a guest on the Jackman Show and Weekends, right, in the past? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, oh. not, no not. Yes. No. <laughs> I don't know if I ever, no, no. Here's no, our no, no. producer, I've Young Hale. I confirm. still remember which of the various shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're, yeah. we're all one big happy family. Yeah. Even though you're a bunch of reformist sock dems. Right, yeah. Kale, <laughs> Kale has only popped onto screen to uh, condemn social democracy. I'm just That's kidding. Right. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, you're all complacent. Uh, it's actually a ruse. Uh, <laughs> you know, this, you're actually undermining the cause for communism. And, and is it like a thing? It's like the sock Dems, they killed Rosa. Like, that's the whole thing that they accuse you of yeah. these days. Do you know you what I'm talking personally. about? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Your family. We can, we've traced it back to my mom's name is Rosa, too. Different Rosa. Mm. But yeah. Uh, yeah. The connections. <laughs> yeah. Rosa, Rosa was done dirty. She didn't deserve that at all. Even though, as Bosker said, I think some of her analysis is maybe undermined by the actual history of social democracy. But, but she was like mad respect to the revolutionaries. Okay, of course, like, of even course. though some of their theory is a little whack. But <laughs> we we ride for Rosa. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, Kale, any last thoughts oh, on social shit. democracy? He, I mean, he peaced out. He's back. Any last uh, thoughts on social democracy before we call it a night? Uh, yeah, I mean, big fan. Uh, <laughs> would, would like it. Huge fan. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, nice. I'm I'm a socialist. I'll, I'll I'm a Marxist. I you know I have a specific critique of capitalism, and I think socialism, whatever. I think there's different conceptions of what that is, but I, I do think um, there are certain key aspects to what socialism will be that do kind of deal with the major problems of capitalism. And so I do think that, um, you know, there's certain structural mechanisms within capitalism that continue to reproduce the really bad outcomes and that mm -hmm. socialism as kind of our, in the principles that guide our process of trying to build towards socialism, um, they are supposed to ameliorate those. But uh, I think it's, you know, I think we should, we should be humble and, and be a yeah. little you know, unsure of the future. We shouldn't be so, you know, rock rib deterministic and say, listen, if we get social democracy, that would be a much better world. And if we're able to go beyond it, if we are able to succeed where our predecessors uh, were not able to in the past, uh, of course, I mean, that would be like even better because of, that would be the, the better outcome for the vast majority of humanity. Um, yeah, but, uh, we, we should fight like hell, like Bosco was saying for things like Medicare for all and mm -hmm. for like basic workplace democracy demands that, um, greater to the extent that it's possible to expand democracy into the workplace, into the economy and to all the other aspects of society, politics and culture that it's lacking currently. I mean, we, we do want that. And so we should be fighting for those, uh, demands and reforms and, um, and we, start with the labor movement, you know, or at least we kind of prioritize the labor movement because we know that's what works. And unless mm -hmm. we get another better answer, I don't know, we're just going to have to keep coming back to that. So listen, since you bring up Marxism, I have one last thought, which actually goes back to our opening segment on conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is it. So uh, a few years ago, I reviewed a couple of books on conspiracy theories for the New Republic. And one of the authors was like, there are way few conspiracy theories on the left than on the right because the left has the ultimate conspiracy theory, Marxism. And the thing is, like, he obviously meant it as a dig, but <laughs> right. But he, in a way, I mean, you know, going back to he's you know right. something, he's right. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, I don't know, like, we do believe or that she. there I don't is know. could be a she. It was a he. It was a he. Yeah. Um, but you know, we do believe, you know, in I mean, if you want to put it on like very general terms, that there is a small cohort, let's call it the ownership class, uh, that exploits the vast majority of people. Yeah. I, well, and also not just that, but like it is, um, the, the role of ideology, if, if you have a coherent ideology is that it helps you process these, uh, you know, random, seemingly random events that happen in the news all the time, especially in the days, these days where it's like a torrent of news to your face every single day. Um, what ideology 
helps you is to sort it into a narrative and in, 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 in a coherent kind of you can plot the points and be like, oh, this is why this is happening, you know, and in a way it replaces the role of conspiracy, which is mm -hmm. um, is to is to ascribe a narrative to these seemingly random events. Right. Um, we just have the correct narrative. And the other people, they just it's not as correct. You know, well, we know and we know that because like we're scientific socialists that like it's like we actually like Are this we? is I, I, speak for yourself bro <laughs> i don't know what that right. means Ned, Ned hates okay, science fair. no i'm just kidding um, seriously uh, no i don't know i mean just that like i i think i think we treat i mean obviously you know um you know uh people who are physicists aren't they're not called newtonians uh they're not called eisensteinians we're called marxists uh and i think it's i think it's because to a certain extent uh an analysis of capitalism it's it's difficult to get it fully to the level of science in the way that like biology or physics can be and it's largely in part because we're dealing with actual society where there actually are class divisions like the fact that marxism can actually explain uh how society is divided uh it can also then explain why mm -hmm. there's going to be limitations for like why people will or won't agree to yeah. it or, or like why it won't get legitimacy within um like social scientists broadly like everything that's followed marx's work all the like everything in sociology has basically been there to try to disprove marx and they've all failed but <laughs> but like it's a, you know you prove that they failed mm -hmm. um right but the, just the thing on the conspiracy is just that like yeah there there is like there are a very small handful uh there's like less than a thousand companies that control all of our lives yeah across the entirety of the globe and humanity uh but it's not a conspiracy because they're actually all trying to kill each other like there's a <laughs> right. there's a structural feature of the economic system that forces them into competition constantly. And so it's probably, it's more rare that they're going to be united and trying to like, you know, collaborate together to, you know, to get what they want. And it's more often the case, especially when you don't have a united working class, when you don't have uh, the state working on behalf of working people, um, that capitalists are just going to all be knives out trying to, you know, destroy each other because they care above everything else. They care about making a profit. So, and, and so that's where it's like, you could have different people put in the same, in the same companies. They're going to still have to do the same thing. They're going to mm -hmm. fight to the death because the system, the fact that they're in a market, they have to compete. Um, and they own all the most important stuff in society, uh, means that they're going to try to kill each other and then it ends up trying it ends up killing all of us yeah so that's why epstein was killed <laughs> that's <laughs> why epstein was killed <laughs> <laughs>but like okay it's not like oh my god the conspiracy of the of the capitalist class versus the working class or some shit of course like of course you have stuff like um like there is something like class warfare with regards to okay hey that the work that the capitalist class w directs against the working class um because they have shared interests to a certain extent um but like okay secure and profit but those interests are also like very like the the ability to to coordinate and to cooperate internal to that class are limited by okay are limited by that competition factor and making profit and um i think the best i think a useful way like a useful 
heuristic to think about this with regards to competition and stuff is like if regards to, it's like a like a like almost like an evolutionary mechanism like you do you do what the market demands of you or you or there's natural selection and you don't survive like you do, you do what they te- what the market tells you or you die so you don't have a choice and so it's not like oh you can just decide something else um like if you decide something else then you die that's the thing it's like selection um i just i just watched i was just on hassan's uh, instagram and just saw that he was on the the paul logan um boxing fight yesterday and he even was on a photo with schlatt and um i'm really lo- i feel like i've talked enough about politics today and stuff i i don't even know if i want to okay let's put like i don't want my recommends to be leaked and everything let's I'm really not in the mood to like do the art thing today. I'm sorry. Once again, I fail you. Isn't there anything interesting going on? Okay, you know what, I'm going to end it for the today here. I'm just bored with my, I just watch streams myself now. I will just do that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's nothing. Oh, let's, let's, let's raid Var- Variana. Yeah, I can raid Variana. Yeah. Woo. No, I, oh, come on. Fuck, I need to reload. You almost room. You will. You will now raid into my favorite, my most favorite ASM artist. Um, I I need to reload. Um, she's called Variana. She's from Moldova. And she's amazing. Bam. Okay, come on. Work, work, work. Great thing. Variana. <laughs> Or is she called Vari? No, she's called Vari Junior here. Oh my god. Okay, Vari. Ah, there we have her. Okay, good. 
Okay. She's a good gamer girl. Um, thank you for staying with me. Um, yeah. Yeah, no problem, that's what I do. <laughs> so yeah, 